The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from, from you, you no, no secrets, secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare for the Paschal Feast, continuing in the Apostles' <coughs> teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Let us make ready our hearts to renew the covenant of our baptism. As you are able, let us kneel before our Creator and Redeemer. Let us ask God to bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and to disclose to us the secret purposes of our hearts. And most especially, let us remember the covenant of our baptism and test our hearts and conscience to know how faithfully we have preserved in resist resisting evil. And whenever we fail, and most especially, let us remember the covenant of our baptism and test our hearts and conscience <clears throat> to know how faithfully we have preserved in resisting evil. And whenever we fell into sin, have repented and returned to the Lord. Holy and immortal God, you, you formed, formed us from us the dust, dust in your image, image and, and redeemed, redeemed us from sin and death by the, by the cross, cross of our Savior. Through the washing of baptism, baptism you, you raised, raised us up with him to share, to share in, in the, the new covenant, covenant with all your holy people. But, but we have squandered the inheritance of your saints and have wandered far in a land that is waste. Therefore, we turn to you in penitence and humility. In your great mercy, forgive us, forgive us and restore us, that we may rejoice in your presence and walk in your ways to, to the, the glory, glory of, of your, your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Let us pray. Almighty God, whose son fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, but did not sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in submission to your spirit, that as you know our weakness, so we may know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. After you have occupied the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you have settled there, each of you must place in a basket the first part of each crop that you harvest, and you must take it with you to the one place of worship. Go to the priest in charge at that time and say to him, I now acknowledge to the Lord my God that I have entered the land that he promised in our ancestors to give us. The priest will take the basket from you and place it before the altar of the Lord your God. Then in God, the Lord's presence, you will recite these words. My ancestor was a wandering Armenian who took his family to Egypt to live. They were few in number when they were there, but they became a large and powerful nation. The Egyptians treated us harshly and forced us to work as slaves. Then we cried out for help to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. He heard us and saw our suffering, hardship, and misery. By his great power and strength, he rescued us from Egypt. He worked miracles and wonders and caused terrifying things to happen. He brought us here and gave us this rich and fertile land. So now I bring to the Lord the first part of the harvest that he has given me. Then set the basket down in the Lord's presence and worship there. Be grateful for the good things your, Lord, your God has given you and your family. Let the Levites and the foreigners who live among you join in the celebration. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. God's message is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the message of faith that we preach. If you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from death, you will be saved. For it is by our faith that we are put right with God. It is by our confession that we are saved. The scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. This includes everyone because there is no difference between Jews and Gentiles. God is the same Lord of all and richly blesses all who call to him. The scripture says, everyone who calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus returned from the Jordan full of the Holy Spirit and was led by the Spirit into the desert where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. In all that time he ate nothing so that he was hungry when it was over. The devil said to him, if you are God's son, order this stone to turn into bread. But Jesus answered, the scripture says, human beings cannot live on bread alone. Then the devil took him up and showed him in a second all the kingdoms of the world. I will give you all this power and all this wealth, the devil told him. It has all been handed over to me and I can give it to anyone I choose. All this will be yours then if you worship me. Jesus answered, the scripture says, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The, de the devil then took him to Jerusalem and set him on the highest point of the temple and said to him, if you are God's son, throw yourself down from here. For the scripture says God will order his angels to take good care of you. It also says they will hold you up with their hands so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. But Jesus answered, the scripture says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil finished tempting Jesus in every way, he left him for a while. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Nice day out there today, isn't it? Beautiful. Spring is coming. And as the days begin to lengthen and the birds start to sing, have you heard the birds singing in the morning yet? They're coming back. And the plants are starting to bud. And we are being reminded once again, as so all this happens around us, we're reminding, being reminded again of God's care for all of creation, including ourselves. So we're part of it. The return of spring year after year is a constant reminder to us to learn once again to trust in God. God is faithful. God takes care of us. God can be trusted. Comes around again every year. Trusting God. And that's the spiritual message of Lent. And in, this, in particular, the message of this first Sunday in Lent. Sometimes people think, of, think that Lent is all about how bad we are, how sinful we are, how much we've got to repent. But no, Lent is fundamentally all about how good God is. It's about how good God is. Yes, we, we need to deal with some stuff in ourselves, but that's not what we're really about in Lent. We're about coming back to the goodness of God and turning ourselves towards the goodness of God and opening ourselves towards the goodness of God. Lent is all about how good God is. God takes care of us. God can be trusted. And Lent is about learning to trust God. Today's readings are all about helping us to take that first step on the road towards trusting God. The first reading from the book of Deuteronomy is a famous passage that describes an ancient harvest Thanksgiving festival. Moses, remember the book of Deuteronomy is, is, is presented as Moses giving a farewell address to the Israelites, summing up everything that they have been taught in the wilderness. And Moses is teaching the Israelites how they should thank God once they reach the promised land. Here's what you have to do, says Moses. Take some of the produce of the land, the first produce of the land, the first crop you get, take it to the priest and give thanks. Give thanks by remembering how God saved you from slavery and how God brought you through the desert and how God brought you into a rich and fertile land. In other words, they are to give thanks by remembering how God is trustworthy. By remembering that God can be trusted. God has saved in the past. They, Moses outlines all those marvelous things that God did. Great and terrible signs. And that means God can be trusted to save in the future. And the book of Deuteronomy promises again and again, all through the book, that if the people learn to trust God, they will discover that God takes care of them. The challenge is that first step, taking that first risk of trusting God 
and again and again in Deuteronomy and in all of the writings in the Bible that, that flow from Deuteronomy, the message is the same. If you can take the risk of trusting God, you will learn that God takes care of you. And if you can't take the risk of trusting God, you will never know that. So the book of Deuteronomy and the, the theology of Deuteronomy becomes very important in much of the Bible. And it becomes very important in much of the New Testament. And in fact, both of today's readings from the New Testament rely on Deuteronomy and quote from Deuteronomy. The second reading, little excerpt, little bit taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, begins with a quotation from Deuteronomy. God's message is near you, on your lips and in your heart. This comes from, right from the end of the book of Deuteronomy, this is really when Moses, Moses is saying goodbye to the people. Moses is about to die, and he's encouraging the Israelites to be faithful, to trust God, to keep the commandments that they've been taught. And Moses is reminding them that this commandment is not difficult. It's not some great distant thing that they have to struggle to grasp and understand. He's reminding them that God is close by, as God has always been close by. He's saying God can be trusted. God's message is near you, on your lips and in your heart. And Paul goes on from that to make the same point in the passage we heard. He's using the, the, the resurrection of Jesus as the example of, God, uh, uh, of how trustworthy God is. He says, because God has raised Jesus from the dead, we can trust God to save us. God has saved in the past. God will save in the future. God has raised from the dead in the past. God will raise from the dead in the future. And then we come to the gospel reading, which is also about trust and which also draws very heavily on the book of Deuteronomy. The story is one we all know very well. It's a story of how after Jesus was baptized, after he received the Spirit, that same Spirit drove him out into the desert and subjected him to testing. Forty days, we're told, Jesus was in the desert. Didn't eat anything. And we model our observance of Lent on Jesus' 40-day fast in the, de in the desert, in the wilderness. And what's going on in the desert is that Jesus is learning to trust God. That's what this is all about. Because in the desert, Jesus is confronted with all kinds of temptations to do things his way. To do things in a way that kind of makes sense to him. He's tempted, for example, to give people what they want. Bread. Instead of what they need. Which is salvation. He's tempted to make the end more important than the means by worshiping the devil instead of God. He's tempted to force God's hand by putting himself in danger, jumping off a high building. And all of these are temptations of worldly power in one way or another. 
There are temptations which measure our actions by efficiency and effectiveness rather than by whether or not they are right. And to each of these worldly temptations, Jesus responds with a quotation from the book of Deuteronomy, which, of course, is the book about trusting God, and the book about learning to trust God. So when the devil says, turn the stone into bread, he says human beings cannot live on bread alone. When the devil says, worship me, what does the book of Deuteronomy say? Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And when the devil says, jump off the temple, what does the book of Deuteronomy say? Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Learn to trust God. Don't push God. Don't try to force God's hand. Learn to trust God, because God can be trusted. Deuteronomy tells us that. The book of nature all around us tells us that. We sometimes forget that Jesus had to learn to trust God human as we are, tempted as we are, but he did not sin. He learned to trust God. And it took him a lifetime. It takes all of us a lifetime. It took him a lifetime. And we can see this time in the desert, these 40 days of fasting as a kind of training and preparation for the testing that would come later in his life and ministry. But because Jesus spent that lifetime learning to trust God, when he got to Gethsemane, and it really mattered, he was able to say, your will be done. And he was able to trust God to the death so that we would be able to trust God at the moment of our death, too. Let's follow Jesus through the wilderness and learn to trust God. So is the news getting you down these days? <laughs> a lot happening. Well, here's a Lenten exercise if the news is getting you down these days. Spend the next 40 days fasting from the news. Turn off the radio. Turn off the TV. Turn off that news feed on your phone, for heaven's sake. And maybe shut down the computer as well. Don't really need that stuff. Learn to trust God. If you want to stay connected, what you might do is, instead of daily news updates, get a, get a good weekly news summary, weekly news digest or review, and read it on Sunday afternoons after you have been fortified by word and sacrament. And for the rest of the week, don't pay too much attention. Now that's a Lenten fast that would improve everyone's mental and spiritual health, wouldn't it? Because most of what the news industry thinks you need to know actually isn't very important. Here's an ironclad guarantee. I'll stand behind this one. No matter what happens or is said to happen in the world of news, the sun will still come up tomorrow morning. 
because God takes care of us. God can be trusted. And Lent is about learning to trust God. There is news. Much of it is bad. Even more of it is trivial. And quite a lot of it is inaccurate. And there is good news. We're about good news. We read the good news in the Bible, but more importantly, we see it in the faithful life of worship and service of communities like this. So let us this Lent recommit ourselves to that good news. Because Lent is the season of very good news indeed. The very good news that God can be trusted. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all that is, seen, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God gave our ancestors a land flowing with milk and honey. Let us pray for all peoples on this bountiful earth, and especially for those preparing for baptism. One holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world. And the bishops, clergy, and faithful in every place, especially John, our bishop, Brent, Prime Bishop of the Episcopal Church of the Philippines, and Peter, Presiding Bishop of Korea. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the Church, especially our parish Lenten project and the work of Camp Caledonia, that in faithful witness we may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. For this parish and its ministry and members, especially Erica Roberts, Michael Batten and their family, Mike Roberts and his family, the members of Parish Council, and Margaret Smith. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for those preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of nations, especially Elizabeth, our queen, and those in authority under her, that a spirit of peace, respect, and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. For the peace of the world, and especially for the peace in Ukraine, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. <clears throat> for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, especially and all those who suffer the refugees prisoners and all in danger especially those fleeing violence and war that they may be relieved and protected we pray to you Lord Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For our neighbors, especially the community of Faith Baptist Church, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For those who have died, especially those of this parish whose anniversary of death falls in March, Bertram and Edith Stebbing, Dorothy May Rett, Julia Hardy, Mary Ann Walters, Florence Skinner, Joseph Sluggett, Dorothy Metcalf, Ron Howard, John Wyth, George Esselman, Bert Isley, Mary Coles, Douglas Jansen, Francis Bishop, Dorothy Marie Brett, Betty Dedilu, Sue Salto, Alan Clutchy, Dick Barr. and Sir Jinder Lee. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who placed your word on our lips and in our heart. Hear our prayers for all peoples. Receive sons and daughters into your family. Wash them in the waters of new life and feed them with your bread and wine through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
We shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God, our refuge and our strength, receive all we offer you this day, and through, through the death and resurrection of your Son, transform us to his likeness. We ask this in his name. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we We remember his death, death, we we proclaim proclaim his resurrection, resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread, communion communion in Christ's body, once once broken. broken. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If If we we have have died died with him, we we shall shall live with him. If we hold firm, we we shall shall reign with him. him.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with the body and blood of your Son and given us hope and steadfastness in our life as a parish. You have instilled generosity and compassion within us and among us. Encourage us to hold fast to this within our parish and fill us with vision and courage as we seek to be more deeply connected with our wider community and our neighborhood. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit to seek, seek your justice, justice and peace through, through Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus our, our Lord. Lord. I'm expecting a long string of announcements this morning, but I will start things off. Uh, first of all, simply by um, reminding everybody of the Lenten study program, which begins not this week, but next week. But today is the absolute drop-dead deadline. If you want to take part in that, you need to let me know so that I can make sure we have enough materials on hand. So if you would like to be part of our four-week Lenten study program on reconciliation, what is reconciliation, please let me know today. Um, for those of you at home, or even those of you at church, I'm just... Send, send an email to priestst at telus.net and uh, I will um, make sure that you are part of, uh, part of the group and that you get the Zoom link when that time comes. Uh, just making sure, I think everything else... Uh, oh, uh, coffee. Coffee. Uh, we can now start doing coffee hours, so we're going to have coffee next week. And on March the 27th, those are two Sundays when we have uh, visiting speakers. So we will have an opportunity for a coffee hour afterwards. And also, of course, on um, Easter Sunday. And if uh, coffee hours are something that you would like to have more of, and wouldn't we all, uh, I think it would help Sylvia if we had more people on the team. So we're... we're certainly willing to accept applications for uh, coffee helpers on, on Sundays. And also a reminder for the next couple of weeks, uh, nominations are open for uh, the Order of the Diocese of New Westminster. This is um, a significant part of our parish's life. Uh, every two years is, is naming someone to nominate to the bishop for uh, membership in the order. And you may make nominations of any parishioner in good standing to me uh, by the 20th of March. All right, next, please. That's, someone else has got that. We've got the meeting, right? Tomorrow, tomorrow night's meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. As we are entering Lent, as we always do every year, we have, Jill, I can actually take this off. Wow. <laughs> um, we always do a Lenten project. And as the parish has been exploring what roles we can play within moving forward towards truth and reconciliation, we wanted the Lenten project to continue to build upon this. Last year, we were... We were blessed to have a little girl, Autumn, um, allow us to be part of her life journey and her spiritual journey in having her baptism with us in December. And I know, like me, so many of us were deeply touched and moved by her and her family and really wanted to stay in touch and continue fostering this relationship. With that, we reached out to Bishop Lehman of Caledonia, which is where the Moore family is from, and to explore ways that we can continue to connect and to see if there was a project that might be, we may, might be able to support through our Lenten project this year. And as God does when we trust in him, he does lead us to what we need. And he led us to an amazing project with needs that have increased so much with everything that has happened over the last couple of years between COVID, fires, floods, um, and the unmarked burial sites that 
continue to find. This project is Camp Caledonia. This camp brings youth and families from all the Indigenous groups in the area together in the region to help address the overwhelming number of suicides amongst Indigenous youth using Indigenous traditions and practices. During Lent, we're going to hear more from different speakers about Camp Caledonia and the truth and reconciliation that is happening even within our own diocese. Some of the things we have to look forward to is next week, we have Carrie Baisley, who is Missioner for Indigenous Studies for the Diocese of New Westminster, or Indigenous Justice, sorry, for the Diocese of New Westminster, will come to speak to us in person. And as Michael mentioned, we will have coffee downstairs afterwards, so we will have an opportunity to ask questions and uh, talk more in depth as well about this. Bishop Lehman is graciously going to make the trek down and come to talk to us in person from Caledonia. And that will be happening on March 27th. So, and again, we will be able to celebrate him spending time with us by having coffee and getting to know him better as well. Michael has agreed also to speak to us about his experience with the Niska Nation. And I'm excited to announce that once again, we will be able to have our multicultural dinner. So, so those are some things that we'll be learning and there'll be, there'll be more information, more about the multicultural dinner, more other speakers and information that will also be coming during the weeks of Lent um, as we learn more about how we can move forward with the Camp Caledonia, with Truth and Reconciliation for us. So, yeah, I'm very, very excited. So I hope you are as excited as I am about our Lenten project this year. So I will turn over to Cheryl. Thank you, Christine. So all kinds of good news today. Um, Michael talked about the fact that we're going to be starting to have coffee Sundays again, and Christine also mentioned the multicultural dinner, and that's all wonderful. And some of you may have seen, or all of you may have seen, the announcement by the bishop um, a couple of within the last couple of weeks with things opening up that we can do these these community events, these social events. But there are a couple of riders, and probably the most significant of those is that um, in order to attend you must be vaccinated. And uh, the wardens and Michael have met in, to try and figure out how to best fulfill this direction in the least cumbersome administrative, at the least administratively cumbersome way. So what we've decided is this, that um, we need to have proof of vaccination. If you have a vaccine passport, that's great. But of course, there are other ways to prove that you've, you're vaccinated. You might have, a, for example, the card that you received with your last vaccination that says, you know, that says that you've been vaccinated. Um, so what we're going to do is ask you to come and show us your proof of vaccination once. We will write down those details and then you you won't have to do it again so that you know you don't have to check in every single time like you do when you go to the restaurant. So we're going to launch that process today for those of you who have um, a couple of minutes and some vaccination evidence with you. Um, after the service, I will stand at that table over there and look at whatever you can show me and write down your name. Um, and if you happen to be one of those people who doesn't have a vaccine passport because downloading it from the internet and all that is, is too puzzling, too annoying, too whatever, but you would like to have one, um, we are happy to help you with that and we can you know, print out your vaccine passport and so forth. I'm not really in a position to do that today, um, but we will uh, let me know if you need that assistance and we'll figure out a time and a place to help you with that. Thanks.
just to clarify uh, and elaborate on one thing that, that uh, Cheryl has said, these uh, restrictions regarding participation only apply to social times and gathering times after church. They do not apply to worship. So you do not need proof of vaccination to come to worship. You do not need proof of vaccination to come to worship. When we start having coffee hours and other gatherings, especially with food, that's when we require that, that proof of vaccination. Uh, just a friendly reminder that tomorrow night at 7 p.m. there will be a Zoom meeting um, to discuss and, and ask any final questions about the territorial acknowledgement. Uh, we would like you to contact Colin if you want to attend. Um, and it will be at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. So if you have any final questions or you have anything you want to discuss about it, this will be your opportunity. Everyone is welcome. Just let us know ahead of time. Thank you. Good morning. Lent is an exciting time for the diocesan youth movement as it is the lead up to the Monday Thursday sleepover. And pending COVID restrictions, hopefully this will be able to take place. So just pop that in your calendar. It'll happen the evening of Monday Thursday at Christ Church Cathedral. We will gather for their evening Monday Thursday service. And then it'll be an evening of fun and events and so on and so forth. And then we will all sleep on the floor of the cathedral. And it is quite <laughs> an experience, I might add. It is not the most comfortable. And with all the youth, not a whole bunch of sleep happens. But it is most definitely a good time. So if anybody has any youth or young peoples in their lives, anywhere from the ages of about 14 to about 19, um, yeah, just pop that in their ears. And more details to follow if we're able to hold the event. This is where the youth of the diocese give abundant thanks that we do not have a medieval cathedral with a stone floor. May you be transformed by God's grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.